how long has the video games piece been a part of the school? So it's been a part for the last few years now, for a while. You know, I don't know exactly. <laughs> that, it's interesting because like I, I would think of video games as being kind of a new thing, but it's not. It's a, a full-fledged been around Industry for a lot now. of years now, absolutely. Yeah. Do they offer degrees of any kind or it's just the, t the, the information that you get, the skills that you get? Yeah, so they are actually pursuing degrees. Like their associate's degrees or bachelor's degrees. So wow. they're with us 36 months learning that bachelor's. I can get a bachelor's degree in video game design. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, pretty I cool. I could get it. <laughs> you could, why not? What, what, do I need, what do I need coming into the school? Do I have to have uh, some, you know, pre-experience in the professional world or do I have, have any education in video game design? Or? Really good question. You don't actually, we're going to teach you everything from the ground up. So no prior experience so needed. Where do these students come from? All over the world. And all different kind of backgrounds? Absolutely. I mean, how do they know? How do they know that they want to go into video game design? They've been playing video games? A and... lot of them have been playing all their lives and they maybe had that one game that hooked them in and they really fell in love with gaming and decided now it's a career option, you know, they can actually wow. do it. How competitive is admission? Admission, actually, like I said, we're going to teach them from the ground up. So they do need to be through with high school, have either completed that high school diploma, GED, and then they do need to go through an admissions process where they'll apply, write a short essay, and then they'll be able to enroll. Yeah. Okay. And does it help? I guess it might help if they have some real world experience coming into it. Certainly going to be beneficial to them. But like I said, not not required. Not required. So, yeah. Are there prerequisites that everybody has to take before they go into their specific discipline? They're going to, since they are earning a bachelor's degree, they're definitely going to take their gen ed. So they're going to have English, they're going to have math, all that good stuff like we're used to. So it's a university. Absolutely. Yeah. LA Film School University. Yeah. Type well, vibe. Okay. I don't know. I think in my mind, for some reason, it was like there were. It was like a tech school. I think it kind of has the best of both worlds in that they are getting lots of hands-on experience, but they're also still getting that real-world education, just like you would find at any wow. traditional university. Wow. The first chunk of the the program is building like a tool set, and that tool set is uh, using our game engines. It's using Pro Tools, Photoshop, Maya. The programming languages that we use. This program is fantastic. It, it exposed me to every single part of game production from concepting through how to even get it greenlit by the money, so to speak. And, and that's completely invaluable because I have my hands in every single aspect of the project. So far I've talked to three students, so far I have three students who tell me it's not about money. Have you talked to their parents? <laughs> no, but I talked about one of the uh, the loan officers. I'm like, so I was like, what if a loan person hears you say that it doesn't matter where you make money? And they're like, well, I don't know, like, they'll pay it off eventually, I guess, <laughs> that kind of thing. That's awesome. The thing is that if you love doing something, it's, that's what it's about. And no one can really keep you from doing it except you. It's not about money. If I didn't have video games when I was younger, I probably wouldn't be here. This provides a user experience where you can forget about your actual reality and help you get by the tough parts in your life. So someday you'll end up helping some other little kid go through that's, some... That's what I want. Wow. It's like medicine. It is. What kind of price can you put on your happiness? Like at the end of the day, it, to me, and I might sound contrived, but work is kind of meaningless. I want to find something that is I passionate about, and that's making games for people. So to me, whether it costs forty dollars or four million, it was irrelevant because it's what I wanted to do, and I can't put a price on on enjoying my life from a day to day. Wow! You just said making games for people. A lot of the game designers I've met, they say that. In a sense, they don't care what anybody else thinks. They're making it for themselves, what mm -hmm. they like, what they want. Right, and that, I think it's kind of two different outlooks on that. I think what I want to do is make games that, that change people's perceptions of the world around them. And, and yeah, I can do that for myself, but at the end of the day, it's a really unique medium to tell stories, and sometimes those stories can change the world, even in a small way, and that's what drives me. Like, yeah, I, I definitely make passion projects on the side that are really just me messing around, but the stuff that I'm really into is, is making games that, that change the world because I've seen it happen. So where do you work now? I work at Disney. So I make uh, games that shape the, the future generation of, of young gamers everywhere. And it's cool to, to see other people here doing the same thing I was a few years ago because I was there too.
So they're going to learn level design. They're going to learn the actual programming and coding. They're going to learn the game art. And they actually start with analog games. So learning board games, card games, oh, and working really? their way kind of through the history. Yeah. So game theory. Absolutely. Game theory, game history. They're going to be well versed in both. I'm Sean. Oh, What's your Amy. name? Amy. <laughs> and you're a, a, a sound? A, a... Teaching the game audio class here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's a, it's a, like a three month class or something like that? It's a one month class. I'm going to learn how to do sound design in a month? Yep. Really? Yeah. Uh, first day. Maybe I should take uh, this class. I know, right? First day, the students sign out a field recorder, and they go out on the first assignment, which is called a scavenger hunt. So they go out and start collecting backgrounds and sound effects using the field recorder. Day two, start bringing the sounds into the Pro Tools program, and they learn how to start editing creating a sound library that the students can use for the games that they're working on throughout the program. One of the things that we really like about our program is that you touch everything. Uh, you touch sound design, you touch level design, you touch game design, programming, art. You learn what you like, what you don't like, what you have an affinity for, what you don't have an affinity for. When you finally implement that and you see it and you, you feel that, that moment of resonance, and it happens with the game design students too, right? Like the first time somebody plays your game, and when they're done, they go, yeah! Like that moment, <laughs> like seeing that you gave that moment to somebody is awesome. Are they working on tablets? Are they sketching things? Are they writing things? Are they... In the art class, they take that in the, the lab next door, uh -huh. and they have Cintiq monitors, which are freaking awesome. <laughs> uh, and you just draw right on the screen. We're going to be using uh, the Oculus Rift in conjunction with the Unreal 4 engine. This is the user interface that our students learn in, I want to say, about our fourth or fifth month in the program, depending. And this is a level that was built inside. The second I hit Alt-Enter, you can now step inside the virtual world. Whoa. So, Am I yeah. ready for this? Is it scary? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You know, I believe this environment was made as an inspirational piece to World of Warcraft because the student that made this was just very, very much inspired by uh, Blizzard's uh, artwork and uh, everything that they've done. So when a student, okay, first of all, if I don't take this off, I'm going to want to live there. <laughs> My wife's going to be like, what? how come you didn't come home? Like, honey, I was in this other world. So in one month, our students would actually take a, uh, some concept art from the internet and you go ahead and start uh, mocking up a play environment. Well, it would start with like the ground and the terrain. Then we'd build the little cottage and add the wood textures and everything. And then finally add the lighting and texturing and shading so that you would get something like that. What would you say to somebody who's, who's a little shy, who doesn't feel necessarily comfortable for whatever reason, but, and they're, they're good at what they do, how, how would you encourage them to develop themselves, you know, their personality so that they can fit in a large group team environment? Everyone at some point has to network in order to get enough, another level up in their career, no pun intended. <laughs> and uh, and uh, one of the best things about it is you know, once you start networking, once you start getting yourself out there, and you know, if and of course, if your your portfolio has substance, people will reach out to you. You know, and again, it might be a small little gig here. Oh, I need a little character for this mobile app here, or I need an environment painting for that here. But that goes a long way. And if you sh and if you show consistency and professionalism, that those two alone can take you a very far way. I think a big part of interviewing for for working in games is is fitting into that culture because. I spend, you know, 60 hours a week with these. It's more time than I spend with the, the people that I'm in relationships with. They're family and, and you have to fit into that dynamic. And it's what's really cool to me is in game studios, everyone from, you know, the, the shyest, nerdiest programmer to the most outgoing artist is all working towards a single goal with the same thing in mind. There's just something so boosting about being able to bring people who maybe naturally aren't as outgoing as others, putting them in that room and then allowing them to shine in the ways that they shine in a really valuable way. And that's like super inspiring for me to facilitate that and bring those people out of their shells and, and, and expose them to, to the other people who might be a little more outgoing. I work better when I'm friends and close family with the people I work with. And if maybe I can just talk to them for two minutes or just buy them a cup of coffee, if, if I knew ahead of time that maybe that's what it would take to get a, a good day of work out of them, as cold as that might sound, I want to do that because especially for creative people, if you don't have that time to take off and kind of let your brain unwind, then you kind of, you get forced into bu bubbles of not creativity.